G'day folks, well for tonight's little equipment examination uh, I picked this up at work today, uh, they were going to throw it out so I figured I might as well grab it and have a play with it uh, it's a industrial inkjet printer um, yeah it was decommissioned very abruptly uh, unfortunately the guy who gave it to me was probably the best one to decommission it and unfortunately they didn't get him involved in it so they pulled it out of service and didn't purge or flush or clean the ink tanks or anything and now it is completely blocked up um, likewise it's not booting to the desktop on the computer on this thing so it gets part way through boot up and just stops it won't go any further so I don't know if it's related to the fact that everything's dried up and full of solidified ink or whether it's just a uh, maybe also an additional ROM issue or something but it was working when it came out of service so I'm not too sure on that one, but we'll pop it open and have a good look at it. Uh, if I turn it on, I'll show you what it does anyway. It's got a nice little interface on it, nice keyboard. This thing is probably, he said it was roughly $30,000, so it's a fair bit of equipment. I should show you the print head too. It's not like a normal printer, this just squirts a jet of... Uh, like a dot matrix jet of ink out whilst the conveyor is running or the um, extruder this was used on an extruder to print dates and things sort of like that's an example of used by date but yeah that's what it can print on it it can print barcodes used by date that sort of thing that's a very good example of what it does uh, the website matthews.com.au has an example of one running on a uh, milk bottle system just putting the use by dates on milk bottles and that's exactly what this is designed for is very high speed uh, production data printing just printing barcode or serial number manufactured date uh, manufacturer or meterage say if it's cable or something like that like power cable same deal those markings on there would have been made by the same kind of printer if not the same printer or a very similar model so yeah and that's as far as it goes I can hear it trying to do something in the back, but it's not doing it. It's also got inputs for rotary encoders to t trigger it whenever it uh, passes a certain point, or when the extrusion passes a certain point. But I don't know if it's relying on that or not. They've spent a fair bit of time playing around with it, but it just wouldn't play game, so... Oh well, this one's a possible repair. I hope I can fix it. I'm sure they'd like it back, but... I think they've already gone out and bought another one, so whatever. Autopsy, if anything else, it's got a nice touch screen and keypad and everything on it. That's touch and you've got the full keyboard. Um, yeah. So it's a Lynx 86800. And I'll, uh, yeah, let's lift the lid on it and have a look. Now that's the print head itself, disassembled for cleaning. And this uses a, it's got a six, uh, 8,000 volt uh, flyback transformer or, or something in there. So this must use electrostatic discharge or something like that, probably to spread the, um, the spray. I really don't know what all that is, but I'm not about to do a destructive autopsy on it just yet. Not with something this expensive. Not that I'd really sell it, but, or well, not that I have any use for it, but if I can help work out by uh, fixing it, well, all the better. So yeah, interesting stuff. Kind of looks like a weird microphone. But it ain't. You don't want to stick your face in front of that when it goes off. <laughs> Messy. You won't get it off in a hurry. This ink's nasty. The, the makeup that goes in here, which is just a solution of acetone and a few other nasty little solvents, uh, that stuff's potent. It stinks. So yeah. A bottle of makeup is 50 bucks and a bottle of ink is like two or three hundred. And it's concentrate, so it mixes the two together to create your ink solution but yeah you've got concentrate which in this case is white getting printed on black and then you've also got the makeup which goes with it um, Hitachi, I think Hitachi make the makeup and um, the ink I'm not sure, probably a Hitachi as well but yeah nice stuff very effective, very quick uh, this one here was running pretty slow just printing every meter and a half or something but Seeing him work on a production line is pretty good, the milk bottle video. Yeah, I'll post a link to the website in the uh, milk bottle run in the uh, description. Yeah, here's the maintenance manual on draining ink system as well. And yeah, it's got a full 
drain process and you can flush it through with solvent and that sort of thing, clean it right out and make it safe to store for a lengthy period. This machine's been sitting for two years since it was decommissioned, so it's not happy. So it's pump damage, do not allow ink system to run dry. Yeah, so God knows what's happened to it. They've been playing for it with a while, for a while with a bit of um, MAK acetone solution, just plumber's priming fluid essentially, and it didn't come good. It didn't even boot up. That was, the, that was half the problem, it wouldn't even boot. So I don't know if that's related to the uh, lack of uh, maintenance or lack of proper storage process or just an actual problem that's occurred in storage, I don't know. I don't know, maybe someone's had a play around with one before, but completely new to me, but all I know is it looks like an interesting bit of kit. Hmm, lots and lots of bits. Interesting equipment top cover just comes clean off and there isn't even a protective cover over the main board as soon as you lift it off if you don't put it down right you're going to damage this board um, looks like someone's already wiped clean up and stuff over it but it's not bad it doesn't look like it's been damaged just curious as to why it won't boot there are chips missing as well but this thing's probably designed for other systems as well this is a probably a lower spec model low speed model perhaps that's interesting lambda must be made at Black Mesa. This totally won't result in head crabs coming out everywhere if I power that up. That's an EHT, 8,000 volts. That must be to do with the um, ink spray of the, uh, or the the dot matrix spray gun, whatever you want to call it, the print head, I guess you'd call it. Um, yeah, lots of microchips and things, but I can't see any major main like EEPROM or anything like that unless it's permanently attached to the board. There's auxiliary two. There's an empty socket there. Um, nothing's really been touched. It's never been opened as far as I know. I mean, I'll ask him if anyone's opened it and borrowed a ROM chip out of it, but it just won't get past that boot up. Really nice quality components. Not sure what all that's for. That's going down there. There's two there with high voltage warnings on them, so... Okay, that's going out to the print head. That comes back in here. Yeah, it's all part of this. So you've got diode or transistors or something, maybe FET, don't know. Malaysia, um, it's an ST, 2N, 3 something. Where's my inspection mirror when I need it? Yeah, 2N something or rather. Yeah, transistors. Um, anyway, I don't really know. <laughs> the system's certainly got ink and crap still in it. This would be a very lengthy clean-up process if I were to try and take this apart. There's a tank down there. That's the main ink tank, which has had a lot of it spilt on it. That's the makeup tank. There's a feed damper assembly which still has stuff in it. Yep. Some of that could be the MEK that they put in there. Or the um, priming fluid. Probably not the best stuff to feed through it, even though it's very close to what makeup is. I can't remember what's in makeup. I'll have to find an empty bottle and have a look. A nice power supply. Again, very well made. All uh, Nichicon capacitors. I'll see if I can lift that out and get a closer look at it. This Wind River VX Works Systems 2001. Some DC output marks and things. IPM. That's the motor. It's a maglev motor or something. There's no direct shaft or impeller. It's got a stainless steel disc separating the combustible liquid from the actual motor itself. So it's just a non contact impeller, just magnetically driven by a flat magnetic rotor. But, yeah, not half bad, just a shame it doesn't work. Anyway, I'll have a closer look at this and uh, I'll pop that power supply out and just have a quick look at it. But that's kind of neat. A lot of these nice uh, plugs too. And they seem to go to solenoid valves, which will probably all be blocked with crap. So yeah, you'd be sending this thing off and spending thousands of bucks getting it refurbished if you wanted to put it back into full service. Hmm. 
Okay, well the PSU, it's also made by Lambda. And it's actually made in China, but they've used some really nice quality components. All 105 degree Nichicon caps, every single one of them. Um, ST semiconductors. Uh, the transformers look well made too. Like Sometimes you see them really lightly built or just loosely wrapped in tape and thin, small ferrites. They just look fairly well made and well resin potted. Um, yeah, just the overall quality of it looks good. But then being industrial, it would come at a premium price. And that's why something like this is 30000 bucks. It's designed to last many years as long as you take care of it. And it's meant to work 24-7. Like if you're bottling milk or punching out blow mouldings and things, these things run 24-7 for years. That's all there is to it. The occasional breakdown, okay. You might have to replace a print head or something like that, or maybe if there's a filter or something in there that might get blocked, or you've got to clean the air cleaners and things, but generally this sort of stuff is built to run with pretty minimal maintenance. And they just run long hours. Everyone runs this sort of stuff probably longer than they should. Um, it's not often I see a company that services stuff exactly when it's supposed to be. It usually gets a lot longer run before it gets serviced. But anyway, um, interesting power switch. You notice when I turned it on I had to hold it for a second. It's got a little solenoid in it. So unless it receives a signal from the main board that everything's okay, it won't actually lock on and, power, and stay powered up. Uh, it's also part of a cutout system, I imagine. Yeah, there, PL5 is the uh, power switch cutout. So that'll switch itself off if it's told to by something else, a malfunction or an automatic shutdown. If you've got a PLC, you could tell it to shut down once the uh, extruder has run out or whatever. You run out of material. Yeah, interesting stuff, but... Hmm, I'm not sure if I should fix it or just pull it to bits. I don't think work really cares, but... Yeah, it's a shame to destroy such a nice piece of equipment, even though it's a bit messy. There's white stuff everywhere. At least it's not black. If it was covered in black ink everywhere, it'd be even harder to identify stuff. What's that fan? Comair Rotron Biscuit Series DC. Uh, 24 volts, 11.5 watts. July 11th, 2001. So this unit was branded or dated 2002 manufacture so yeah fair enough and that's just your air filter cartridge type air filter which hasn't been cleaned in quite a while yuck yeah that goes over metal grid in there and the fan just draws air clean through it it does work but it's a bit stuffed up that's only just for cabinet ventilation so anyway, that's about all for that this one. I'm going to power it up before we call this video quits, but that's about it. I'll check all the connectors and things, but if it's not booting, I'm going to have to find out how to talk to it from the computer, because there might be some way of uh, diagnosing it that way. I'm just curious. I could easily rip this thing to bits for parts. Nobody's going to care, but it's always more interesting to try and fix some of the more obscure stuff that I find. <laughs> No one gives a shit about bloody LCD televisions, things like that, but this sort of thing worth a lot more than those televisions. It's worth more than all the televisions I've got around here combined. So, yeah. We can't let the simple bit of neglect destroy such an expensive piece of equipment. At least, we'll try. <laughs> anyway, let's power this thing back up while it is, as it is, or at least when I put the power supply back in, and see what happens. Okay, so we're back together again. Only got a couple of minutes worth of memory left on the camera, but we should be right. So that's up. There's a bubble coming out of the pump, but that's about it by the looks of it. Actually, where is that going? No, it's not even going to the pump. All the LEDs are on. That's on run. Uh, coding test strip signals. Uh, TS7 LED. TS2815.
I realize going off. And it stopped. Do not connect. Oh, it's an alarm connector. Yeah. Yeah, it was sounding an alarm. Something's not right. It's not happy with me. Yeah, it's still stuck halfway through boot up. Or three quarters of the way. Yeah, it's not happy with something. It could be detecting that the pump's not running or something like that. I think I'm going to have to stop that and uh, try and at least get the pump to run and recirculate. Yeah. That's probably one of the key things. Because I can't see anything going through the lines. I don't think there's even anything primed in it. I have to manually prime it and try from there. Anyway, that's another day. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. I hope you enjoyed it because this stuff's always fascinating.